Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, Those uh, are very, very important points you're raising. Also, the question of why stun grenades were not used. Mr. Raman, if you were on the ground masterminding this rescue operation, what would you have done? Because to the naked eye, it seems the Manila police was completely out of sorts, unprepared to deal with a live hostage situation of this magnitude, sir. Okay, I'm going to go across to Mr. Raman in just a moment. General Datta, was storming the bus in the fashion in which this bus was stormed the only option available before the police? And I'll tell, I just want to state for a moment, the reason why all of this is so important is because the Commonwealth Games around the corner, God forbid if something like this were to happen, India should have its standard operating procedures in place. What happened in Manila this morning was a complete botch up. Let's just hope the people who matter in India are watching to ensure that they're revising their SOPs. Was storming the bus the only option available, General Datta? Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, when we consider carrying out the hard option, that is the actual assault to rescue the hostages, you have to be absolutely clear that you have run out of all other options. Now, uh, in this particular case, it was the ex-police officer and as per records, he was supposed to be a uh, person with a good reputation, though of course he was uh, removed from his uh, uh, post due to certain uh, reasons uh, on disciplinary grounds and uh, therefore you were not dealing with a terrorist, you were dealing with a trained policeman uh, who actually may not be actually thinking of killing anyone and uh, therefore the uh, uh, options with us were to negotiate and to get the person... You know, this is the bit that I find most amazing. As Mr. Doval just said, the door was open. If there had been a sniper at that time, they could have brought the hostage taker down. That didn't happen. And now, these cops are entering through the window, assuming that the hostage taker is dead and they get fired at by an M16. This could have proven Mr. Doval to be very, very dangerous for the police personnel. Mr. Doval? Uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, the very fact that uh, you did not achieve surprise. Uh, secondly, it was a police officer, ex-police officer and not a terrorist or a jihadi or a fidain who had actually come to kill and get killed. So therefore there was no question of actually storming this uh, bus. This man could have been given assurance that okay fine, you surrender. We will, we'll we will reinstate you. We will reinstate you. We will give you back. We will give you back your top case. job. You will be given a hearing uh, in the democratic uh, manner. Uh, but then uh, this was totally foolish to actually go and try and carry out an intervention. And that also, when you attempted, you fouled it up. Therefore, giving an impression to this man, the ex-policeman, that the police is uh, going to gun for him. And once you know that they're going to gun for him. Though he is not a terrorist now, he carries out the actual uh, shooting at the uh, hostage. Mr. Raman, how would you have handled this operation differently? What are the mistakes you saw on the television screen the Manila police make? What are the steps that should have actually been kept in mind while this rescue operation was being planned? Sir? See, firstly, the negotiations with him. Negotiations are a very important component of uh, hostage situations. Here, this man had an individual grievance. He was not a political terrorist or an insurgent. He had an individual grievance. He had been sacked and he wanted to be reinstated. So that gave us an opportunity to keep him engaged in a kind of a conversation about the conditions under which uh, he could be reinstated, etc. Just to give him a hope that possibly he will be reinstated so that they could, the rest of the force could have planned better for, uh, in, for intervention, which they didn't do. The negotiations were not handled properly. That was the first mistake which they did. And the second, when they agreed, when he agreed to release some of the people, the old people, people who are ill, etc., that provided them an opportunity to have one or two men immediately infiltrated to the bus, get rid of the bus, so that they could have overpowered him or used a stun gun or whatever it was. That opportunity which was provided for nine people managed to get out of that bus. For nine people to come out of the bus, it would have taken them some time, at least a minute or two minutes. And that time should have been would have been sufficient for a commando to get into the bus and overpower this man, which was not. And I do not know why they did not make use of that opportunity when these people were getting out of the bus to forcefully enter the bus through one or two commandos and overpower this man. And that was not done. And, and, and thirdly, 
the way they were trying to use a sledgehammer, etc. You don't use a sledgehammer to get to the bus and all. It's very dangerous for the hostages. That man was watching the whole thing. This, this shows the force which was used by the Manila police for dealing with the situation. It had not been trained at all for intervention role, for intervention purposes in a situation like this. They just brought in some people, some policemen, and made them hand the job instead of bringing, the specialized, instead of bringing specialized people who had had specialized training. So these are some of the mistakes which they had committed. It was handled in a very amateurish manner. And the whole, everybody, everybody was watching the way the force was uh, dealing with it. And this is, not, this is not very good because it has a bad effect. There will be a copycat, copycat incidents of this nature in future.